As we continue to unfold our conversations here at WEF Africa 2019, the questions around gender equality continue to come up. It's an issue that we've continued to highlight and yet continues to feel mismatched, continues to not be dealt with perhaps as fully as certainly should be. How do we make sure that that conversation not just spreads around the continent, but is put into action? We're lucky enough this time around to uh, be joined in our discussion by uh, Shola David Bora, who is a Standard Bank Chief Executive for Africa. And we also have Anne Gituku Shongwe, who is from the UN Women as well. Ladies, thank you so much for the time. Truly appreciated. Um, and, and, and I suppose the discussion will be frank and it will be completely as earnest as we would like it to be. Anne, I'll start off with you. Um, with regards to the UN having to have the discussion, of course, around gender equality, how difficult has it been spreading the message? Are people actually listening anymore? Well, I suppose for us, you know, this is what we talk about every single day. Mm. And every single day, the, the, the big thing that we do know is that if we do nothing different, uh, gender equality will persist for the next 217 years. Yes. We have the data that shows this to us. So in order for us to actually change the game, what, we ha what we've been working very hard on is expanding and growing our partnerships, you know, and trying to, I suppose, transfer the responsibility of ensuring gender equality to institutions that can do that, to the spaces where culture is created. Um, you know, just to make sure that we have we're making it easy for, for, for partners to come on board because I think in the past um, you'd be having, having conversations about gender equality and many of the conversations were almost like a closed conversation amongst women. Um, what we found now is that uh, in order for us to truly disrupt this uh, um, gender inequality is that we've got to specifically start inviting, welcoming, partnering with institutions everywhere. And that means, and I think, you know, Shola is here because we have a, a global partnership called He For She, yes. a platform called He For She, and He For She is a solidarity movement um, by men in their various roles with women. And by men, I mean in most institutions, it is CEOs who run these companies. Yes. In most I mean, many of them are men. We've got some women, but the majority of them are men. Um, Shola is an exception in, 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 across the continent. And so inviting them to start taking responsibility under their watch. In this very case we have in South Africa right now when we've got gender-based violence um, that is so pervasive, the post office needs to have taken full responsibility to make sure that under their watch there would never be a case of gender-based violence. And so if we have, you know, for us as UN Women, it's not for us to do, it's not for women to do, it's for institutions to decide yeah. that in their workplace there will be uh, um, safety, and, safety and security for women. Women feel free to do their work. Women are supported to grow. Um, and that men are taking responsibility for this. Um, yeah. But we also have partnerships with the church and with traditional leaders, etc. cetera. So Isn't that what is slowing down the progress, though? Do you feel that that is the fact that people aren't collaborating or communicating enough or you know, partnering enough to get the message across? Is that what's slowing down the ability to get gender equality curbed completely? I think one of the things that we've learned over the past years, few years, is that the issue of norms and stereotypes is a big issue. Sure. So what men believe, what you believe, um, last two weeks ago we were, we were um, at the Luris looking at advertising and marketing and films and videos and TV programs and basically saying, in that world, how are you projecting? relationships between men and women. When you sell a Jaguar, right, why do we need to have a half-naked woman lying on this Jaguar as a sales pitch to get people to buy this? This stereotypes who women are. And so challenging those environments to say we need to unstereotype. So this is called yes. the unstereotype alliance. So there is, um, you know, the issue of, it's not just about bringing partners on board, but it's about saying we have to challenge what has become normalized. Mm. So, uh, you know, sexual harassment has been normalized until we had me, um, um, the hashtag MeToo movement. Mm. Sexual harassment in the film industry was something that was just accepted. This is how you do it. This is exactly it's how you go about doing norm. business. Is, is so, that, I'm going to just shift to Shola and ask you then, is that sort of a sentiment you're also getting in corporate? Is it the sense of things were just the normal status quo and you have to then 
really be disruptors in the industry in order to get anything done? I mean, Standard Bank is very clear um, that you have to be deliberate about changing the narrative. And for us, um, gender equality is a human rights issue. Mm. This is not just something that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an add-on. Yeah. It, it has to be fundamental to the way you run your business. Yes. Your policies have to reflect um, gender equality. Um, it's about doing the right thing. It's about setting clear targets, yes. you know, which helps to focus the mind. So that, for instance, um, Standard Bank has a target that we would have 40% female executives across the group by 2023. Sure. Yeah. And how's that going? Um, we are kind of halfway there. Sure. Halfway okay. there. You okay. know, it's a journey. But what that does is it helps to focus um, development, yes. recruitment, yes. Um, um, executive development plans, um, and, and prepare women, you know, because it's not just about equal pay. Equal pay is important, yes. okay? Especially making sure you're paying the same for the value you get. But it's about access, okay? It's about equal access. It's about equal opportunities. It's about making sure that there's diversity within your groups, at the meetings, mm. at the table. And the only way you can really make a difference is by being deliberate, putting it in targets, putting it in policies, and creating awareness. Like Anne said, our group chief executive is a he for she champion. Yeah. You know, we've shared that across the chief executives in um, our Africa regions, um, where we have 19 countries outside of South Africa. Yeah. We have a target that we're going to um, increase the number of female chief executives. It's currently about 10%. We're going to double that to 20% sure. minimum by 2021. You know, so those things hmm. help to help um, actually make it real yeah. and to get everybody you know, behind it. It's one of the, stand the sustainable development goals. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the yeah. he for she uh, campaign as well. Just, just run us through exactly how it works and what it actually means for not just Standard Bank, but really for, um, for, for gender equality as a whole then. I'll start off with you, Shona. It's a solidarity movement. It's a solidarity movement that basically says that we all have to work together to achieve gender equality. It's a rallying cry to all the male executives, yeah. you know, in the organization, in your sphere of influence, that you've got to support female executives, female employees, yes. to realize their full potential. And um, I believe when you have these kind of campaigns, when you have these kind of initiatives, it helps to change the narrative, it helps to change um, culture, you know, um, and, and people's belief system. And actually see women achieving and delivering, you know, um, on, 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 the, on their goals. So it's a solidarity movement, and I think that, um, you know, the more people who come on board, the more impact it will have. Yeah, yeah. Certainly a, a, a movement and a campaign you'd want to continue for as long as needed, but not something that you want to do, possibly. Well, we, as I said, we, as we reflected on all the work that we've been doing on gender equality for many, many years, what we, what we realize is that actually we've not been giving, we've not created the platform to make it easy for men to actually take you know, the responsibility that they should be taking in the first instance, yeah, you know, so, so you're right, need the help. you're right, yeah. we shouldn't have to be convincing CEOs yes. of companies that this is what they should do, mm. but the reality of it, gender equality is pervasive, yeah. and that's what we have to do. Um, what we found very useful about He For She, especially this Impact Champions program, is that, the, is that the CEOs of companies have taken very specific decisions and choices that they're going to change in their organization, and they're saying, there's three things I want to change, and it's different things with, from one company to the next. But generally, they're looking at gender parity issues, they're looking at, um, at a, you know, their HR, their recruitment processes. You see, something like equal pay. Yes. If we assume that everybody has equal access to jobs, then we would never have this unequal pay issue. But the truth is, 
We are, we are the, 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 the ones who, who, who bear children, so we take time off to give birth to our children. And during that time, it's very easy, you know, you lose um, some months and it's very easy then to be measured as having put in less time, depending yes. on how the, the, the company organization is structured. Many women come in at a lower level than men do in most companies. And so if, you don't, if you're not deliberate about creating um, equity, uh, then you're not going to actually change the game. Um, and so you have to be very conscious of it. And we've seen companies who have taken the decision and we've seen specific shifts where, you know, suddenly you have 40, 42% members of the board. You have, uh, you know, women in leadership, as she's saying, you know, increasing. It's a deliberate effort, right? But the he for she solidarity movement is not ex exclusive to, to business. We have heads of state who are taking decisions. Yes. So in, in, in Iceland, the president of Iceland is a he for she champion and his um, whole campaign has been focused around equal pay and he has made equal pay illegal in the entire country. Sure. In Malawi, it's focused on ending child marriage and he then uh, legislated against child marriage in the country. And so um, we have in South Africa what are called he for she taverns. Mm. He for she taverns is saying, that if we are going to, to deal with gender-based violence, then one of the key things we need to do is to go where the, the gender-based violence happens frequently. And Taverns is a place where over 65% of perpetrators or abuses happen linked to alcohol and substance abuse. So the Taverns retrains men, and it's men talking to one another. It's not women who go there to train the men. It is men like you who decide, you can decide, that at 702, no other man under your circle of uh, sphere of influence will ever perpetrate violence and so that's what we're saying to the in the taverns and those spaces so this is wh where this partnership comes in and so when you have a ceo like um sim shabalala take the decision that they're going to make standard bank he's going to take personal responsibility to be a champion and then push make sure that the company is this way all we have to do is you and women is work with them and make sure that you know you're achieving those indicators where you need extra support we work with you you know but 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 really truly standard bank is doing the work we don't have to do the work so you know our job and our responsibility as you and women is to create the platform so that that companies can do can go ahead and do business so so are you finding that you have other corporates who are perhaps joining the bandwagon, if I can call it that, that are willing to take on the mantle as, uh, as Standard Bank is willing to do at present? I believe so. I mean, there are other he for she champions, chief yeah. executives, you know, across the continent, across the world. Yeah. You know, and it's a movement. And Some of those discussions here at WEF as well? Um, there is yeah. a women's um, based session, um, but I don't know whether there's anything specifically on, on he for she, sure. but certainly yeah. You know, the women's agenda is being discussed here. Um, so, it's, so it's very important because there's a subconscious bias, you know, many yeah. times. Yeah. When people, men don't even realize, you know, that they are discriminated um, because of that um, um, Unco yeah. unconscious bias. So um, being deliberate about it, um, taking that narrative up as, as something that... Um, you force the conversation. Yes. If your entire management team or your entire executive team are all men, there is a challenge. There's a problem somewhere, yeah. you know. So you've got to fix it, and you, you know you've got to work towards it. So I think certainly um, uh, other corporates are involved, and you know heads of state, like Anne has said, and would like every single man, adult man frankly, on the continent to be a he for she champion. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, you can definitely sign me up. I don't know where I need to, but... <laughs> yeah, you know, I will show you. Heforshe.org. He yeah. Go on there, you sign, but I think what's important is not the signature. What's yeah. important is that you take the steps in whatever space that you can. I think one of the important things about this Standard Bank partnership that we have is that it's not just the announcing and launching and the sort of funfair about it, yes. but they're putting their money into it. And I think what is important is that we have a partnership that um, where Standard Bank is investing in women farmers across the continent. Mm -hmm. And so we're partnering together to make sure that women farmers, you know, first of all, the first thing is that we have to remove the barriers to, of entry to women farmers. Yes. We have to look at how do we actually um, uh, ensure that the market will buy from them. Mm. So that every uh, school feeding program, every uh, supermarket, 
you know, is really deliberate about buying from women farmers because when you buy from women farmers, women farmers in turn build their families and the community and, you know, the economy would thrive in that way. And so this is a very important partnership that we have mm -hmm. and um, it, it, it shows that it's not just about the sort of... Uh, facade of it you know it's not just the story of oh we're a he for she champion but we're actually looking at what does that mean to our business and until you do it where it impacts your business then you're not changing the game um, and we're calling on many companies to say buy from women you know like the Senate Bank they're looking through and saying okay so in our procurements what does that look like how are we transferring, how are we ensuring that women farmers, women entrepreneurs are supplying the business? Because only then are you going to start changing the story. You start developing sort of a culture of it as well, Absolutely. right? So, Shola, you, is the company saying to themselves, more it still needs to be done? You know, have, have the activities that, that have led to even the He For She program, for example, meant that there's still just like a whole host of people who are saying, let's do more, let's get involved with this, let's perhaps just offer up a whole lot more. Uh, and, and what are the plans perhaps from here on in? You know, it's a business imperative. It's good business sense. Mm -hmm. By the time 50% of the population are female and you're trying to bank um, the continent, you're trying to achieve our purpose, which is to drive Africa's growth. Yeah. You can't ignore the women. Women in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, um, constitute more than 50% of agricultural activity. In the SADC region, we found that about 70% of the informal traders, they're all women. You know? So women are actively involved in economic activity. What they don't have is access to finance. Yes. So the partnership that we have with um, UN Women is exciting because it helps us use our services, you know, to empower women in agriculture. And we're encouraging them to use smart climate Absolutely. agriculture practices, you know. Um, so, so we're actually, there's alignment between what we're trying to do from a business imperative and empowering women. Yeah. And we have found consistently that when you empower women, it has a multiplier effect on that community. Yes. You know, it yes. creates real yeah. value. And um, so it's exciting for us on all fronts. Um, we believe in it. We think it's the right thing to do. Um, and it's also helping to drive growth on the continent. Yeah. Mm. Very finally, Shola, I'll just ask you to, to help us close off, I suppose, and in, in really just asking about what you feel the message should be then coming out of the three days of WEF and what you'd like to see as sort of a theme that threads through and, gets me, and, and is able to be pulled out as saying, we found a way to fix or to work towards fixing this element. I mean, if you think about the theme of, of WEF, which is um, the fourth industrial um, revolution and financial inclusion. Mm. When you talk about financial inclusion, primarily you're talking women. Yeah. You're talking about taking from the informal sector into the formal sector. Yes. So when you use technology to create innovative solutions to address the problems that women face, you um, not only empower them, you enable them to get involved in um, the financial um, ecosystem. Yes. And more importantly, they are then empowered to grow their businesses. Yes. Um, and for us, um, Standard Bank believes that this is our purpose. This is why we're here. This is why we are in 20 countries in Africa, you know, to help enable every single African, particularly the women who have historically been underserved, you know, an opportunity to serve them helps drive Africa's growth and helps fulfill our purpose. Yeah. And yourself, Anne? You know, what's been interesting about this particular initiative is that we have other he for she partners. And one of our he for she global partners, but also a partner here in the country, is Vodacom. Yeah. And what's been interesting is that Vodacom are very interested to train uh, women farmers in digital literacy. 
So part of what we've done here is to mm -hmm. say, okay, let's bring the farmers that are supported by Standard Bank to with the farmer with the with the training from Vodacom, and then we you know so we added on to that so that the women are not just. Uh, learning these climate smart agriculture technologies, but they themselves are becoming technologically serving. We had a, a, an interesting uh, meeting during Women's Month with them, and the women are coming out and saying just the shift that has happened because the women farmers that we're already working with, the shift that has happened because of uh, digital literacy and how they're beginning to already start thinking sure. about the market and understanding their yield and looking at productivity in new ways and understanding what the climate is doing. And I mean, it's a whole new world for a woman farmer who uh, otherwise was relegated to you know, the, the, the kind person who buys two cabbages from her and there's never a dream of imagining a time where she can actually grow. And so yeah. this for us is a real opportunity to say, we can start out at a baseline. And we started out by doing a baseline. We start out at a baseline with women who are informal, um, small, far very, very small subsistence farmers to women who can begin to actually challenge the, the agricultural environment here. Which is, which is largely commercial, largely white male. Yes. And so here you have smallholder farmers in South Africa, in Malawi, in Uganda, in Nigeria, who are beginning to, to really be serious market players because of the kind of support. And it comes from the decision to be a he for she. Yes. And therefore, how do we start driving this work? So when men have the courage to step forward and say, I'm going to make it my business yes. to ensure that gender equality will happen in my lifetime, in my institution, then we are talking business. And we really invite every man everywhere. If every man everywhere took the decision to really say, under my watch, gender equality will happen. Gender-based violence will not happen. Yes. I will not tolerate any form of um, discrimination against women. And that in fact, I'm going to invest rather because I know that the benefits of having more and more women is a growth point. In the economic strategy of the minister, he's talked a lot about small businesses and talks a lot about farming, growing. But what is missing, we feel, is that there isn't an emphasis on specifically investing in women in the economy. And that's what's going to grow the economy. Economies don't grow from large minds. Economies grow from many, many small businesses right. and small farmers who suddenly have access to finance, yes. who have access to technologies, who, have, who can imagine a different future, who are employing people. They start with one, but they eventually they have 20, yes. you know? Yes. Then we grow. And appreciate the time. Thank you so much, ladies. Really, really appreciate your time here. As well as we unpack this issue, I, I clearly hope and I, I sincerely hope it, be, it goes beyond the conversation. It needs to go beyond that. It actually needs to be actioned. It needs to be put into action and, and something that needs to be shown uh, and seen for future sake as well. Thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Indeed, we were joined in by Angiti Kushongwe, who is from UN Women, as well as uh, Shola David Bora, who is Standard Bank Africa's chief executive there. We unpacked the conversation around gender inequality. It is one of many issues, but no matter what we say, this needs to be resolved now. But how we work towards that is certainly a conversation that must be found out now and must be cleared as soon as possible. We'll continue to give you the latest and uh, everything that is coming out of WEF Africa 2019. Do continue to join us. WEF Africa 2019, brought to you by Standard Bank 702 and Cape Talk. More at ewn.co.za.